Hey guys, uh, thanks for stopping by. Um, before we start, uh, there's a I've got a Discord server. Um, people tell me that it's it's out of control, but um, you should join it anyway and help civilize it. Tame the Wild West, as it were. Uh, the information's down there in the thing. Uh, please pardon the mess. I'm in the midst of redoing everything in this computer room. Uh, but uh, that includes carpentry, hence the filthy fingers. But, um... Imagine, if you will, um, if you can put up with my dirty hands, uh, an old computer sitting alone by itself, so lonesome. Perhaps it's a, perhaps it's an old Unix machine of some sort, uh, headless. All you could really do with something like that is uh, connect to the serial port with a terminal program or something, log into it. Yeah, that's kind of interesting to do sometimes, but um, imagine, uh, imagine instead if you had a LAN. Uh, you see, th this, this, this is an old computer. It's, uh, it's running uh, some old Unix or something. Can't, uh, you can't let it connect. Uh, to the internet because it's it's insecure. You can't let incoming connections into it. So other people can't play with it, which is kind of a shame because, you know, it would be nice if you could let your buddies log into your stuff. Um, well, maybe you can. What if we took a, like a modern PC, a modern Linux box of some kind, um, call it a gateway, and hook it to this same LAN. And let's say this LAN is on uh, 10.0.0.0 slash Eight. All right, and this this gateway has two Ethernet cards, and one of them connects to this private LAN that's got all of your old computers on it. We might have, you know, some other old computer here, like a that's supposed to be a that's supposed to be a a, a TRS-80 of some kind, but it doesn't really look like one, does it? Um, you know, all, all your old computers are on here. Uh, I'll just make boxes. Lots of old computers. All of them have Ethernet cards of some kind. Uh, all of them are happy. But this gateway has uh, has two Ethernet cards in it. One of them connects to this LAN. So if you've got a you know keyboard and a and a monitor attached to this machine, you know you can log into some of these other machines. You could log into this old Unix machine uh, through it. You could log into this VMS machine uh, via it. But um. It also has uh, a second ether Ethernet card in it that um, that connects to the internet. Because of this being a modern Linux machine, you know, we can keep the security updates current on it, so it's okay. It's okay for it to touch the internet on this side. It's not doing any routing between these two networks. And if you log into this machine, if you have an account on this machine, you can log into this machine, and then from here you can log into these machines. So you could give all your buddies accounts on this gateway machine, and then they could connect to your stuff. And that would be kind of fun. Uh, but what if you wanted anybody to be able to connect to these things, but not make connections back out to the internet? You wanted to have some kind of virtual old computer museum where people could log into old Unixes and old VMSs and whatever and fart around with them, you know, and you could keep some disk images so if somebody screwed something up you could very easily restore the system and stuff. It'd be kind of fun to, you know, kind of show your stuff off and help people learn about the old computers and stuff. You don't want to give everybody and their brother a shell account on this gateway machine just so they can log into this stuff. Well, you could, uh, you could forward a port through this thing. So, um, say this old Unix machine's running a Telnet, uh, Telnet daemon. Um, uh, that runs on port 23, I think. So, um... We can forward a port through here, so that whenever somebody tries to connect to, say, port 2323 on the internet side of this gateway machine, it forwards that to port 23 of this machine over here. So that means anytime anybody telnetted to this, uh, to port 2323 on this gateway, um, they would actually connect to port 23 on this um, old Unix machine inside, inside of this uh, private network. 
and they could play with it, but since this doesn't route back to the internet through through here, um, they couldn't um, they couldn't use these old insecure machines to you know launch denial of service attacks on people out there somewhere or something like that. So that would be kind of neat, um, I guess. Um, but you know, if you've got like a like 20 machines here or something like that running all sorts of different services. I mean, this this is an old Unix machine. Say it's, it's say it's a Spark 20 or something like that. Um, it could also, you know, it, it might have FTP. Um, if uh, if you could somehow route connections from this machine back to whoever was connected to it, um, you could even forward X11 connections over that, and they could. Uh, they they could they could run like an uh, 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 an an X server like Zephyr or um, you know an X server that comes up in a window you know and run uh, XDM on it somehow off of one of these machines and you know you could it could give you a choice of all of the all of the old X Windows machines inside of this network you know like like you were like you were using like a real X terminal back in the day you know and you could connect to different ones and play with CDE on the on the Sun machine and. And, and stuff like that. That would be cool, but we can't make connections back through the gateway to the internet. That would be insecure. Well, what if, what if we put another relatively modern machine in here? It would still be cool to use something kind of old, or maybe something old that's been upgraded somehow. Um, and we we could run we could run some kind of VPN. Uh, server on here, like OpenVPN, um, or uh, what's it called, Tink. Uh, somebody was talking to me about that the other day. Apparently it's a little easier to set up than OpenVPN. These, these listen on a port the same way as the Telnet server did on this Unix machine up here, so we can forward these ports again um, through this gateway machine. Now this, this, this machine that's running VPN, it can't route back to the regular internet either. It's, it's just as stuck on this on this unroutable LAN as all the rest of this old stuff is. But we can forward those ports so that somebody running OpenVPN client software down here somewhere with their own machine, you know, they can run OpenVPN client software and um, that, that essentially makes them part of this network. Um, it, it creates a tunnel through the internet and it through this port forward and attaches them to this VPN server. So all of a sudden they're part of this LAN, even though they're you know on the other side of the world or something. And then when they try to you know run um, run uh, X, 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 X11 programs on one of these old Unix machines, you know they can uh, they can have it uh, they can have their display environment variable set to you know whatever IP address they get from the OpenVPN server on this machine, and they can they can do that. They can they they can be a, a, an actual part of this network of old computers, which is pretty cool, right? But now imagine imagine that instead of just this being just a computer that's being used to connect to these things. Imagine that this is another gateway box just like this one. Somebody else has their own private LAN with all of their old machines on it. Now shit's getting exciting, right? And say that this is a, this is a private network 10.0.1.0 slash 8 or something like that, right? Um, so these, these are completely different subnets, all right, but they can route between each other. And if we, if we keep a routing table on this machine here that's handling uh, all of this stuff, well, we, can, we, can, we can route between these two subnets. So this guy can connect to these, all, all of these machines, and anybody using one of these machines locally can connect to his machines and we can all play with each other's old stuff which would be nice right and 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 more people can connect to this you know somebody else could somebody else could tunnel in here from somewhere else you know and and we could build we could build this big uh, virtual private network uh, full of old computers that's not routable to the regular internet um, and, and and we could run like a 
on so, some some old machine, you know, we could run on a, a, some BBS software or something, so we could have like like um, uh, boards where we could we could we could you know talk about the different machines that were available and what's running on them and how to connect to them and what's going on and hang out and have a good time and, and all this stuff, right? It would be it would be amazing, right? Um, I think I, th I think something like that would be pretty pretty neat. Um, I don't know how practical it would be, but I, I, th I think it would be pretty neat. And um, I've got this this part of it pretty much working on um, on on uh, Dream Cloud right now. So um, that's all out there on in like co-location land where everything is fast. So um, you wouldn't actually be. Uh, having to connect through somebody's home network with a bunch of old machines on it to do this like um, this would be this would be out in the cloud and then like say all of my old machines for example would be on their own subnet somewhere else with a gateway machine tunneling into this stuff the same way that everyone else was but because of this because of the, the routing tables maintained on here you know, everything would route, you know, to my stuff, and my stuff would route back to his stuff, or whoever else's stuff, right? Um, I don't know, I think it would be pretty cool. Uh, I'm surprised nobody's done this. Um, there'd be a little bit of stuff that would have to be done, you know, like, um, you'd have to, there'd have to be some kind of web service probably running on it would probably need to be running on this machine so that you could connect to it from the internet to sign up, right? Um, so you'd have to sign up and create like a username and, and a password of some kind, and um, then you know it would it would give you a give you a subnet that um, that you could use on your own private network, um, and and like a, an account on the BBS in here somehow and. I mean, hell, maybe maybe you could automate stuff so it gave you accounts on a bunch of different stuff that you could play with, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't think we'd we'd want to spread that around the whole the whole distributed virtual private network, but um, and nothing in here would be secure. You'd have to use like a password that you didn't use anywhere else. Um, just you know, you know what I'm saying. All old insecure stuff. Plain text passwords going over the wire. Get a local, read something locally, and put the interface into promiscuous mode. And you can just sniff everybody's passwords right off the wire. Totally insecure, as old stuff is. So you know that would have to be one of the caveats. You know, like you can't expect stuff to be secure. None of the transport layer would be secure because all this stuff's too slow to run uh, SSL. You know, so. But but it, it would be neat. Um, we should do it. Um, I'm not going to put too much effort into this until I've rounded up some other projects. The H11, uh, Daniel Dan Lawrence's D and D, um, and a couple of other things. But I, I think this is something interesting to think about. What what do you what do you guys think? Thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend.